Okay, I'm uh, Charlotte Pierce. I'm uh, the uh, publisher at Pierce Press. Um, I've been involved with IPNE for about uh, since 2007. Is that right, Tortoise? <laughs> Remember the modern Lang or no, the Massachusetts Library Association <coughs> meeting. I think that was my first event that I came to. And I think um, Massachusetts Library Association is not even running anymore, but um, it's just the, um, or yeah, I think, I think it's the New England Library Association. So Pierce Press, and I have uh, three imprints. Piragaji Books is Alternative Education. Giggle Quick Books is my children's uh, label. And we do like environmental and sustainability themes in that primarily social justice a little bit. And, um, and then the day tripper books are regional uh, family friendly destinations around. We started out with New England and we're going into Cape Cod and other areas in the near future. Um, you can reach me at all this, uh, charlotte at piercepress.com. Um, and my website has, uh, it has a sensitive, uh, sorry about that. Sorry, stop. Um, that's the, what the website looks like. Ugh. I'm going to use a keyboard. Um, we've just won an award for one of our children's books from uh, purple dragonfly, uh, first place award with, uh, Story Monsters. It's a book about uh, diverse, famous authors. So it kind of integrates authors you may not have heard about, um, but including Langston Hughes and some that you have, um, along with Virginia Woolf and you know the the uh, the old white guys. Um, the mystical, magical, abracadabrical Daniel McDougal Douglas McFly is a children's book that came out a couple of years ago. We've been endorsed by the Jane Goodall Institute, and that also won a Purple Dragonfly Award. <clears throat> um, one thing that we can do with regional groups is I have a podcast that we run in collaboration with IPNE, and our regional group members can uh, propose topics and be involved in that as authors, as experts. Uh, I know we have Lynn uh, Levine, who She's an, she's an expert in, on um, animal tracking and forestry in uh, Vermont, and she's uh, going to be a guest. We also have, uh, we had a couple weeks ago, we had a, a episode uh, that's up there on uh, virtual book events. So that's kind of like the topic of the hour uh, here. And we had um, Sky Wentworth, who's one of our favorite uh, people, publicists, um, a tortoise knows her, a tortoise and Pam know her pretty well. And she's worked with a lot of well-known authors. And of course, the, the famous Eddie Vincent of IP&E was on that. He's a fr our frequent host because Eddie and I get along really well um, producing these shows. But we're in our 15th episode now. So keep that in mind as you get involved with the regional groups. Um, again, the, the Pedagogy Handbook, that's our alternative education imprint. Um, we're currently producing uh, or um, in developing the version four of that book. It started out in 2012 and it is a, and actually a public domain project. I was just talking about this in the uh, school um, session with um, Dennis Matthew, uh, but we just publish it. Anyone can copy it, no problem. Just use it, work it into your, your uh, your whatever you're working on. Um, we love it when people steal this book. <laughs> um, and the book that started it all for me as a publisher, after I moved up here from New York, I worked for Scholastic for a while, but <clears throat> I, um, I started the Day Tripper uh, when my kids were little as just, you know, we, my co-author and I assembled our or lists of things, places we took our young kids and we worked it into a book that we used then to uh, do a fundraiser for the schools who were in, a, in dire straits at that time. So about 2004. And uh, that was the only book that I published that I've had a 
hand in writing. And that's more of a travel guide. So uh, we're currently developing an app for that. And I'm, I've established a Facebook group for beta readers, well, day tripper divas, we call ourselves, or devos, I guess, if you're, my, <laughs> if you're a guy. But it's, it's a great way to, uh, I think, you know, these Facebook groups are, are great ways to get involvement with, with the books that you have. Anyway, the regional groups um, are, or something we started, we've had, we've kicked it around for a long time and I'm pretty sure Tortoise will, will confirm that, but it's always been difficult because we have a large regional uh, geographical area. I mean, you, we're an affiliate of IBPA and I think we're the largest geographical unit um, uh, affiliate of IBPA, but we go up to, um, this is a, the picture of a, of a book show or book talk that I went, I went to in Vermont and we had a regional group um, meeting there to sort of piggyback on the book talk at a bookstore. And I can't remember exactly what the, the name of it was. Um, I think it's Br Bridgeview Books or something in one of those little Vermont towns. Um, Bridgewater, so, I think. Bridgewater, yeah. Yeah, it's, it was under a bridge. <laughs> Thank you, Torres. Um, we have one, uh, Metro Boston is the biggest one. We have about 40 members in that. And um, that is one that I sort of directly cultivate or as a coordinator. Uh, Southeast Massachusetts uh, was started by our form, or current board member, um, Bill Cordaro, and has yet to get traction, but has potential, I guess you could say. Um, we have a Vermont, Vermont regional group, which um, they did a, they were going to do an in-person session in April and then we converted it to online. And it was actually really, uh, it was like this conference. It was very, a lot of engagement and great um, participation and content. Um, Cheryl Wilfong and Lynn Levine actually uh, coordinated that one. So that was an example of where you know, someone besides a person who's like on the board or in the in the uh, Boston area has has um, taken up this idea of having a regional group. And regional groups can be anywhere. They can be at your local Starbucks or you know, now in your living room, I guess, until we can all get out again. But you know, we've had them at. Um, coffee shops, we've had them at bookstores. Um, they can be quarterly, um, monthly, weekly, whatever. They can be part of a writer's group. Uh, what we try and, and communicate in the, the, I mean, the way it was conceived was that it would be about the publishing process. So not, there's a lot of writer's groups out there and wonderful writer's groups and I hope all writers are part of one. But one thing we noticed as we talked to our members in IPNE was that they'll come up with a book, they'll have a book written, maybe even published or printed, and then they don't know what to do with it. So this is about the process, about getting it out to your, your, your public. Um, we have a, a number of people in Rhode Island who are interested in um, running a group. Um, Maine, I'm hoping um, we can re rekindle that. And anywhere like down the street in your in your coffee shop, as I said. Um, your author events can be a good place to uh, piggyback a meeting. It's often good to overlap them so you don't have to like reinvent the wheel. So if you have an author group you might wanna do and if any regional group after that. Um, I think every one to two months is, is reasonable, sometimes quarterly, uh, whatever you can tolerate uh, as an organizer. Uh, we have done things like reviewing book covers. This is what we did at the one in Vermont um, and layouts and things, um, topics 
themes. Um, you can find editors and designers. I have actually found most of my editors and designers through the uh, through IPE and the, the regional groups to some extent, um, specifically. Uh, sharing marketing leads, everything we've done at this conference. B basically, any topic in this conference would be a terrific to topic for a regional group meeting. And no politics. <laughs> um, I mean, you could talk about politics if you want. But anyway, people wonder if it's going to be a lot of work. Um, I don't know. I guess it can be as much work as you make it. Um, if you're really excited about running a regional group and you want to do a lot of stuff and you have people that want to help you, then, you know, do a lot. Um, I run them probably every quarter, although some of the regional groups, regional, uh, the activity that I've, I have been directing into the podcast, the Face the Book TV podcast. So, and, and the, the pandemic threw everything off as far as in-person stuff. And it was just wonderful to have these in-person meetings, just, you know, go to a coffee shop, you know, eight, 10 people would show up and you know, we talk about books and how to publish them. So it's a great way to sort of connect with people in your community that you may know. Um, we are happy to provide speakers and resources um, from IPNE. Um, it, they're really fun, like I said, you know, um, to, a couple of you, Jack, Tortoise, I think all of you maybe have, Jeff, have been to one. Um, builds community and it builds a connection with IPNE and the more connection there is with the organization the more effective we can be at retaining members um, being in it being a, a resource for for our members so it's all kind of part of of a holistic uh, effort um, don't do it if it isn't fun. <laughs> I love getting people together and talking about book publishing, particularly not particularly. I'm not a writer, so I, I just like to talk about the production and um, other rewards. Um, you get a half price renewal uh, or a membership, a uh, free membership for the or people who participate get a half price renewal. So if they come to a meeting, a live meeting or an online meeting now, they can get uh, free membership for organizers. So if you do uh, like, you know, consistent um, regional group uh, meeting, you can get a free membership. Uh, you'll learn all about publishing, maybe um, share your expertise. And like I said, um, ethne speakers, resources, moral support, fun, 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 and making ethne more, more, um, more successful. This, this a uh, coffee cup <coughs> I got from doing a workshop where we had a regional group meeting at um, Bear Pond Books in Montpelier. I continue to uh, use that, the photos I took at that event. You'll see them all over the IPNI site and social media, my site. <coughs> Take, take pictures, do not have a meeting without taking pictures. The, you can use them for your own promotion, for, for IPNI promotion, um, to support other publishers and, and the organization. Uh, reach out to me, I'll help you set it up. Um, don't forget to share your contact information if you have a meeting. Um, pay it forward on social media. So if you see one of your members you know, hook into them and, and support them. That's kind of how it works on social media to create buzz. Well, at least it works for us. I mean, there, there's a lot of elitism in publishing among mm -hmm. authors who, you know, if you least listen to Stephen this morning about the author who comes in and uh, calls, calls him up on the phone and says, hey, uh, I want you to stock yeah. copies of my book. You know, I'll send them down to you, but I'm not gonna take the time. Yeah, I yeah. Not I agree. I mean, I like what you do, like your mentoring. Um, you know, that's that's something that could be a whole topic around a regional group meetup. Yeah. You know, it and you you would probably get some 
some uh, people who are interested in. For those of you who don't know, I'm the uh, IPNE director of the mentorship program. Mm -hmm. so my job to try to help people connect up, people who want to work together, people who want to learn. Um, yeah. And, and because publishing is not that simple. It really isn't. And, and Jack has a ter ter terrific success rate with the people he's, I, I just love watching your mentees kind of go out into the world and do their wonderful thing. Yeah. Go mentees, go. <laughs> um, yeah, so we, we produce Facebook, or I do, um, my company does, and we collaborate with IP&E. So just contact me about, if you have a topic that you want or a, a regional group meeting that you want to present as as a as a session an episode of the podcast i'm happy to do that it goes it live streams to um facebook linkedin and youtube and then we pull the audio for distribution on the major audio podcast apps so it has legs you know it really does and then promote that if you're on the podcast go ahead and promote that link and people will we'll get your information as well. So um, what goes around comes around. Exactly. And we are we live stream out to our community media station that is in the process of being distributed nationally to the Alliance of Community Media Stations. So any station in, in the country can request it's it's community media, it's not CNN, but it's um, you know, it's regional, it all like politics, all publishing is regional, is local. Um, I just came up with that kind of Maybe slightly about, inaccurate. <laughs> doubt about having these small groups and meeting on a regular basis, the value of them. Yeah. All you have to do is look at our little neighbor to the south in Rhode Island. Those people kick butt down there. They are so I know oriented. They help each other all the time. They've got a little studio where you can go and rent space to write your book. Mm -hmm and hang out and drink coffee. And they're just constantly, Stephen has really done a fabulous job of setting up the, the community of, of Rhode Island. Yeah, Island. and he's had us down to speak, you know, our board members, I've been there to speak. And I mean, Steve, I have to say, is one of the most generous people and yet a really good business person. Um, he will, he will, he's worth getting to know. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, any other questions or discussions? I mean, I guess I'm kind of here trying to sell the idea of uh, regional groups because I can't be the one to like set it up, announce it. I don't know what your, you know, Northern Vermont uh, publishing community is like, but IPNI can and I can as regional groups person support these efforts and give you feedback. Um, put it on our website as an event, put with, you know, there's just like a host of things that come with it that would benefit you. So put your, your publishing website link in. It goes out to our 300, 500 uh, subscribers. Not, we have not that many members, but, but uh, we have a list that it goes out to. So those, those things are really valuable and, um, I just think, you know, it's a big, big geographical area. Yeah. And we've always wanted to nurture these groups. So I don't know exactly where to go from here. We have, well, we have uh, Google groups set up for each one of them. So if you want to. People can do, Charlotte, is people can reach out to Stephen MacArthur. They can reach out to John Meyer and say, hey, you know, can we, can we pull something together yeah. here? Stephen has some great authors who are from Vermont. I read yeah. one, of, one of his books that he, he recently published. It was just an absolute blast written by a guy in Vermont. Um, He's got many award-winning books. Yeah. You know. I, don't think, I don't think there is a, any kind of even ad hoc community of writers in, in Vermont. Um, mm -hmm. New Hampshire has, has its group. Um, it's a sort of- New Hampshire Writers Project? Huh? Is it the New Hampshire Writers Project? Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. they're kind of limp. You know, they don't really, they don't mm -hmm. really do a lot, but um, there's certainly more for, for the IPNE to, to contribute something yeah. to building. Maine has the Writers and Publishers Alliance. That's very active. Yeah, 
-hmm. you know, we've tried to kind of connect with them. And I, you know, I think the, like the benefit to them wasn't immediately clear. No, I don't know. They, um, I, I'm in touch with them all the time, mm -hmm. um, but I'm one of the few mm -hmm. trade publishers there. Yeah, right. They're like, you are Spencer Smith is Seapoint Books. Yep. Yeah. And I'm a trade publisher. Trade and, publisher. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I'm I'm different at Maine Writers and Publishers Alliance mm -hmm. for sure, and also also different here. There just aren't that many. Yeah. Uh, mostly trade well, publishers. Well, you know, and it's not going to be the magic bullet. You know, just like you just have to kind of. I think consistency is the main thing, which is why I was suggesting not to bite off more than you can chew with a weekly meeting or something. Even monthly was too much for us. It's just, you have to gear up and get the word out and blah, blah, blah. And so, you know, I think quarterly is fine, bi-monthly. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a NIPTI member up in Concord, Margaret, somebody who was talking about that New Hampshire Alliance. She was promoting it on a, on a monthly call. Margaret. Um, she's, she's an author. Do you know her last name? Uh, I do not know her. I don't. Okay, I yeah. do not remember. Her. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, her. I think Jeffrey and I are, both met her at the Concord uh, gathering last fall. Last okay, fall. I'll check that out. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do push pull. You know, I, I put up uh, articles <clears throat> about the regional groups on the website. I drive it out to <clears throat> push it out to um, our email list once in a while. But I don't want to be the only one who's like beating the drum, you know. I, I'm happy to support and sort of tortoise, yeah. Yeah, I I participated in the virtual meeting uh, mm -hmm. in April, uh, after ha being all set to drive over the mountain <laughs> over the battle road to do it with your sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. So 